On today's show, we're talking about the Han Solo movie. We're apparently getting a new trailer very soon. The movie's tracking to do about 150 million opening weekend. Plus, I have a crazy theory about the space battle that Ron Howard teased. So we're going to get into all of that. We're also going to talk about Doctor Strange. Apparently, the writer and directors of the first movie have teased who they would like to be the villain of the second film. I think it's pretty cool. I want to break all of that down. We're also going to do the dope list, and I'm going to address Address something going on with the fans in the comments section. This is the Nerdy News Rundown, your daily dose of nerdy news. I am broadcasting out of Uncanny and the King of Prussia Mall. Let's get this show started. What is up, everybody? It's Josh. Welcome to the Monday edition of the Nerdy News Rundown. I am, of course, your host, Josh. I may have already said that, so... S sorry. Uh, my buddy Alex is here. He's going to help me out with the dope list. Hey, guys. Look forward to, to that. It's, it's going to be dope. But let's get right into the first topic of today. This all has to do with the Han Solo movie. Yes, there's more news about the Han Solo movie out there. Director Ron Howard's been very active on Twitter talking about all of the cool things that we can expect from this film. Number one, he did tell us that there is another trailer. This trailer is going to be on the way very, very soon. As far as trailers go, I think I've said this before on the show, I'm actually a big, big fan of what they did with the first trailer. It completely won me over. I was very skeptical right up until I saw it because Literally, we had no idea. All we knew about was all the problems that the movie had. We didn't see anything until we saw that first trailer. It did it for me. In this second trailer, I expect maybe just a little bit more action, maybe a little bit more of that villain, hopefully more dialogue from Alden Ehrenreich. I think that's the big concern. Everybody's like, yo, I don't know. You didn't really give us too much of him in the first one. I didn't really buy him as Han Solo. This is a major concern for a lot of different people, so hopefully they just let the reins off. I think you just give us a ton of Alden just speaking as, as Han Solo. I mean, look, we're either going to buy it or we're not going to buy it. I don't like this idea that maybe Disney is hiding his performance and all the promotional material, so hopefully we get more of that in the trailer as well. There's also some cool stuff. Ron Howard teased a space battle in the movie, even though he said that the movie is going to be mostly grounded, mostly most of the scenes are going to take place on different planets, and it's a very grounded film. However, he said we're getting this space battle, teasing it on Twitter with a very cool photograph of a TIE fighter exploding. And he also said that this is a very unique space battle, something you've never before seen in Star Wars. I actually have a crazy theory as to what this is. It all has to do with that creature that we see in the trailer with the tentacles. And I think we may have actually seen this creature before. So I'm going to drop a little bonus theory video later today about what that creature is and why I think it's so dope. So apparently the movie is also tracking to have a $150 million opening weekend, which some people think is really good, but historically for Star Wars, that would be incredibly low. So the question becomes, would Disney be disappointed with this kind of an opening for Solo? There were rumors a couple months ago that suggested that Disney was actually prepared for the Han Solo movie to bomb and that they were just gonna shrug it off so I don't know I think that this movie coming out is actually going to be a big litmus test for where the Star Wars fandom is exactly at now there's a number of different factors that could make the box office for Solo kind of be hurt this would of course be Deadpool 2 you know Infinity War just in general people have a lot of tough choices to make when it comes to going to the movies that weekend so I don't know there's also so, of course, the fan divide and what's happening with the Star Wars fan community. So that will play a role in it as well. I will watch this $150 million opening weekend projection because these things are actually kind of anamorphic. They flow with different information, different things that come out can sort of adjust them. I remember Wonder Woman was initially tracking incredibly low. And as we got closer and closer to the film, the tracking went up. And honestly, like, I don't even know how they come up with these tracking numbers. Like, they might have some kind of weird algorithm or some kind of alien thing that just has all these prongs on it that predicts the future. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's Master Yoda. Who knows? But in either case, I'll be kind of checking that out. I'm really curious to see what the tracking is for this movie. I'm personally excited for the Han Solo film, but 
almost more of like a science experiment curiosity. Like I've said before, I'm curious to see like what this film is actually about, the film that they made and then remade and uh, things like that. Last thing I want to talk about when it comes to Han Solo is that people are saying that this is the funniest Star Wars film to date. And I don't know, this this news kind of triggered a lot of different people because one of the things people did not like in The Last Jedi was the humor. They thought it was just a little over the top, too much of a Marvel thing, it didn't really tonally fit within the film. So when you hear something like Han Solo is going to be the funniest Star Wars movie ever and you're sort of on edge about the humor you got in The Last Jedi, man, that doesn't really mix for like a good formula of anticipation. People weren't really down with that. So I don't know, personally for me, it all depends on what kind of humor it is. For instance, K2SO in Rogue One I think is very funny and he's literally kind of like a joke machine in the film but I felt like it all fit within the context of the film it's it's it just works I, I don't know it's not over the top it didn't detract from the tone at all so I'm very interested to see how this is as far as a comedy it also brings up the questions of like how much of Lord and Miller's influence is going to be left on this film if it's very funny, is some of that to do with what they did with the actors on set? I don't know. It's going to beg a lot of interesting questions. I think as a, a community of Star Wars fans, we're all really excited to see like what this movie is actually going to look like. Where does it rank within the Star Wars films? And it's just one more thing we can sort of use to see how we think Disney is handling its ownership of the Star Wars property. So that is all of the news updates when it comes to the Han Solo film. Like I said, tracking at 150 million. We should be getting a trailer very, very soon. And it's apparently the funniest Star Wars movie of all time. So I'm very curious. Let me know in the comment section, what does everybody think about this? I mean, does any of this news excite you? Detract from your excitement? Are you going to see Han Solo? Are you never going to see a Star Wars movie again? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, let's get into our second topic of the day. This all has to do with Doctor Strange. And so the writer and director team for Doctor Strange number one was recently talking about the possible villain for Doctor Strange 2. Now, before I even go any further, I have to say this is all just what that team talked about and what they want to do. Nothing official here. And we don't even know if we're going to be getting a Doctor Strange 2. It's possible that Doctor Strange will just play a big role in other movies. And to be honest with you, until we see both parts of Infinity War, we have no idea what the MCU is going to look like as we move into Phase 4 and beyond. But having said that, I thought these comments were very interesting and they are talking about the villain they wanted to write into the next film. This would be the villain known as Nightmare. Now, for those of you that do not know, Nightmare is a famous Doctor Strange villain. He essentially exists in the dream world and has control of people when they are asleep. Now, a couple of different times in comics, Nightmare has done crazy things like pulling mass amounts of people into perpetual nightmares, trying to bring the nightmare realm into the real realm, and different things like that. That. But the reason I think that Nightmare would be such a dope villain is because visually this allows you to do insane things and it could also sort of stay away from main continuity. One of the problems that comic books eventually run into, and I think this is a problem we're getting to start to have in the MCU is when something big happens in a story, your thought process automatically takes you to like, well, wait a minute, where are the X-Men when this is going on? Where's Thor? Where's the Avengers? If this is such a big deal, why wouldn't other superheroes be there? This is a problem in comic books. But if you utilize Nightmare properly, you could do all sorts of massive scale, crazy visual things. And because it's all in the nightmare realm or in the dream realm, it wouldn't touch mainstream continuity at all. I also think that bringing in a horror element and going just a little bit more hard edged with this would be the direction 
I would want to see them take the Doctor Strange character. Some of my favorite stuff with Doctor Strange sort of flirts with the dark side. Like, is Doctor Strange even really a good guy? I mean, there's this part in Jonathan Hickman's run where you realize he's got barely any of a soul left. He's literally been wagering that thing off, using it as leverage to do spells and different things like that. And so... He barely has a soul at all. Plus, he uses the dark arts. And if we see a thing where he sort of channels it more and more, just like the ancient one from the first film, you could see the bill coming due, as Mordu says, in the first Doctor Strange movie. And you could uh, have a really, really cool situation where he has to deal with those things in relation to Nightmare as a villain. Now, the last thing I want to say about this is I hope Mordu would play a role in the Doctor Strange movie. And I think the obvious answer was that Mordu would be the main villain for the second film. But I could see a scenario in which you have sort of two villains in the movie and the conflict with Mordu sort of leads to a larger villain. And let's be honest, we all love anti-hero stories. So if they had to team up and fight Nightmare, despite having major differences and conflict, that could be really cool and a nice setup for the second Doctor Strange film. So I'm really curious to hear what everybody thinks about that in the comments section. I mean, would you like Nightmare as a villain for the second movie? Do you think it should be more do? I mean, answer it and let me know your thoughts about this. Obviously, like I said, we don't even know if we're getting a Doctor Strange 2. But if we do, I definitely wouldn't mind Nightmare being the villain. So let me know what you're thinking. All right, let's get into the Dope list, the list of all the dope things in a rapid fire kind of succession. As I said, my friend Alex is going to help me out with this a little bit, so here we go. The dope list. Number one, a Chinese poster for the Iron Spider suit reveals the best look that we have at the suit so far. This also shows little things on the back that we think are going to have the tentacles that everyone's very much hoping are in the Iron Spider suit for Infinity War. So, Alex, what do you think? Dope? Super dope? Kind of dope? Pretty dope. Pretty, pretty dope. Pretty dope. Gotta be pretty dope. Alex says pretty dope. Number two. The April Fool's videos that we received yesterday, there was a ton of cool April Fool's articles and videos out online. The one that got me the most was the X-Men and or the, uh, the Fox and Marvel deal falling apart. People said, like somebody had an article, they were like, the Fox and Marvel deal's over. And I was like, oh no, and I read it. And uh, yeah, what about you? Was there any April Fool's stuff that you, that you saw? Uh, no, stuff. What do you think about the Marvel Fox deal, April Fool's prank. Dope, kind of dope, not dope. Since got you, super dope. <laughs> the next thing on the dope list has to do with Matt Damon apparently passing on the villain role for Spider-Man Homecoming 2 or whatever they're going to call that. The rumor right now is that he was going to play Craven the Hunter. So Matt Damon passes on a role for Spider-Man as a villain. What do you think? Is this a dope story? Is this not dope? Did you want to see Matt Damon in there? What do you think? Matt Damon, dope. Last thing on the dope list has to do with the new Saiyan that is going to be featured in the Dragon Ball Legends mobile game and possibly in the upcoming Dragon Ball Super movie. This villain is named Shalat, which is kind of a cool name. It's a play on a vegetable pun like all of the Saiyans. So, Alex, Shalat, this news, dope, sort of dope, really dope? What do you think? Super dope. Super dope. And I think that was a pun. Intended. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the dope list. This is my friend Alex. Alex, thanks so much for doing the dope list with uh, me, man. Anytime, anytime. Let Alex know. Give him some love down there in the comment section, guys. Also, what color hair should I have for next time? I got bronze, red, purple again, blue, silver, or green. Yes, Alex is a man of many hair colors, so I'm gonna link his Instagram in the uh, in the comments or in the uh, description. Let him know what color hair should he wear on the show next time. All right, guys, last part of the show. I want to address some fan questions from the video I did yesterday and also just talk about in general something that happens in the comments section. And it's like every time I make a Star Wars video, this stuff happens. That's so why I want to address this stuff with you guys right now. So obviously I did a Raylo video yesterday talking about that Raylo connection. Kylo Ren, Ray being together, that sort of a thing. And a lot of people had questions. The number one question from people that do not like Raylo in the comments section that are reasonable 
was about the abusive nature of the relationship and what this would do for the character of Ray and what kind of a message this would send for young people out there in the world. And to that question, I just want to say that to me, Star Wars is a fairy tale. This is not literal morality. It's literally a space opera. And I'm not saying that sort of excuses the moral responsibility of a big property and a big infamous thing like Star Wars. What I am saying is that you cannot quite take that morality at face value. I mean, look at Vader. Vader literally slaughtered children, hunted down a bunch of Jedi. He tortured his own daughter, and yet he was redeemed. Now, was he literally redeemed? Like, if you want to sit down and literally talk about it, no, I don't think Vader was redeemed. I think all of those things that he did still happened. I think those kids died. I think Leia was still tortured. I think there's a lot of bad stuff that happened. But at the end of the day, he made a choice that affected the fabric of the galaxy and he's destroyed the Sith by doing so for the love of his son. And so I just want to say to everybody that the idea that this abusive relationship being like pushed out there by all these people is such a bad thing. I just think you need to take a step back and think about what you're saying. It's a freaking fairy tale and we're living in a universe in the Star Wars galaxy in which these sort of things have already happened. There's already precedence for this type of a redemption. I will say it is possible that Kylo is simply manipulating Rey like this whole time and I do want to do a video about that because even him talking about her parents and different things like that could all be manipulation. He could be just messing with her and that would be an interesting twist and him going full on villain could be really really cool. I also don't think that Rey and Kylo are just gonna drop their lightsabers, hold hands and walk off into a twin sunset. Like I don't think that's gonna happen. What I'm talking about with this connection is the idea that they're coming together to balance the force together and I think Kylo Ren will be redeemed but it will cost him his life similar to what happened with Vader now the other thing that I want to tell everybody is that look in the comments section you're going to encounter people that disagree with you and sometimes those people are able to voice their opinions mildly politely and talk to you like a normal human being and sometimes they're going to be completely toxic and completely unreasonable. Now, I'm not here to tell anybody how to conduct themselves in the comment section. I will say that I do just try to delete stuff that I think is just hurtful or mean or completely insensitive. But you have one of two options when it comes to talking to these kind of people. You can try to engage them and you can try to find common ground and accept their beliefs for their beliefs and express your own or you can just ignore them and you really have to just take a temperature of what kind of a person you think that they are. There are people in the comments section, there are people in the Star Wars community, there are people in the world that are just straight up a-holes. And if you want to engage with an a-hole, then I mean, you know, you kind of have to do that at your own risk. Like I said, I invite all nerds to this channel, every side of every coin, every opinion is welcome here. And I just saw some stuff in the comments yesterday that was like, wow, this is absolutely ridiculous. And if I were you and you, you know, were not ridiculous, I might just ignore people like that. I don't know. It's really up to you, but I just kind of wanted to address it. And uh, this probably isn't even a, a good way to address it, but that's that's all I got. Like, just either ignore the a-holes, give it back to them, you know, whatever. I just... I don't know. I just thought I had to say something about it. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on a Monday. Hope you enjoyed getting little news tidbits here and there. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and nerdy day, and I will see you in the next video. Guys, you got to help me and Alex out. We're trapped. We're in this box. We're, you got you to help us out. The only way we can get out is if you click those links. There's links, and you got to click them. Did, did you click him yet? Did, did you click him?